Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozori, Evinrude, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk. Hey, I'm Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast for New England. I'm just cleaning up some of my gear here. Had a uh, couple days trip over on Long Island. It was a special media event with our friends from, uh, let's see, Spro, Gamagatsu, uh, Fat Cow Fishing, uh, Quantum as well. So we got out, did a little bit of uh, three-way in the race the first night. Had a lot of fish around. We were marking tons and tons of fish on the electronics, but it was tough to get them to co coax them to bite. But we. Managed quite a few bass, still was a really good trip, had a lot of fun. Got to check out and test out, more importantly, <clears throat> the heavy duty Spro bucktails designed for our fishing here in the Northeast on those bigger fish for three weighing for striped bass, for fishing the jetties, the inlets for striped bass. Then the following day, we got up early, went out of Orient Point, and the game plan was to work on a bunch of different bottom fish. So we were using the smaller Spro jigs, high low rigs, some of the Spro. Um, special uh, three-way rig three-way swivels excuse me the splitter swivels some really cool products did did pretty good we had uh, action all day long we've got some porgies uh, let's see we had some decent fluke had some weak fish a little bit of everything plenty of those sea robins even a couple of dogfish poked in along the way just for fun um, but let's see, moving on, we've got the July issue of the Fisherman Magazine due out this week, of course, jam-packed with some awesome summer fishing. Uh, did a bit of an article myself in this one on uh, using what I call rubber worms, big, big soft plastics in place of uh, live eels. Works really well on the inshore, shallower reefs. Uh, guys are really doing, it, doing well on, out on Block Island. Just another great option for you. Um, so of course, check out that July issue. Hits newsstands this week. You've probably already got it in your mailbox. If not, it's gonna be arriving today. And of course, it's available at thefisherman.com. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then last up, before I get into the report, just wanna pass along word, the Connecticut DEP followed suit from what New Jersey did a couple weeks back. They set up a stripe bass regulations uh, survey. See what anglers want to get out of regulations coming next year because as we have reported multiple times, there are changes brewing. You are gonna see different regulations in 2020. So before we get to the official uh, public comment period this fall, which is gonna come after the August ASMFC meeting, Connecticut started a little, just an informal survey. So we got the link posted up at thefisherman.com. Uh, if you're a Connecticut angler, fill that out. If you fish Connecticut waters, fill it out, submit it. So they're just looking to get a, a feel for what anglers are looking at for regs coming up next year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, all right, moving on into what we've got going on this week. Got an email from Ray Strong. Just before I left my house the other day, to head on that Spro trip, uh, Gamagatsu trip that I was just telling you about. He and his buddy were fishing over in Rhode Island uh, this weekend for fluke. He said they, they went out, first couple of hours of the trip were slow, they had ripping tide against wind, conditions were just not what you want for fluke. Then the tide slacked up, switched, started going the other way, and the bite was downright lights out. They ended up with seven big flatfish from 22 to just shy of 29 inches between the two. That is, that's a great trip. I would take that any day for sure. And I also talked to Greg Angel. He was fishing with his wife Lorraine over the weekend. They were with the Francis fleet and she took home the pool winner on the Lady Francis on the all day fluke trip on Sunday. Uh, so they did really well, got a bunch of fish for themselves, including obviously that big pool winner. But with the opening of black sea bass season on Monday, finally in Rhode Island, the, uh, the boats that have been held for fluke have been adding some really good sea bass catches to the uh, fluke mix. Uh, Francis has had fished a five plus pound to go along with fluke in the three to eight pound class on pretty much all their trips, uh, all the full days. The half day trips, um, staying a little closer to shore, not quite the same fast action that they've got out in the deeper water, but they're still putting together pretty good bags too. And speaking of black sea bass, the bite is still running strong in Long Island Sound. Isabella Cloutier fished with her dad over the weekend. He sent me a picture. They were off of Niantic, and she scored a hefty five-pound sea bass for herself. That is quite the catch. Uh, the fluke bite in that area also seemed to slow inside the sound. Excuse me, seemed to slow down a bit in the last week or so. But I did hear that the area around Two Tree Channel is still holding some good slabs. 
And then I heard from one half of last week's cover model duo as Chris Jensen sent me an email uh, over the weekend with a picture of a solid 4.85 pound black sea bass dreamboat entry that he weighed in at Rivers End Tackle in Old Saybrook on Sunday. Uh, he and his wife Michaela loaded up on another really good catch of big biscuits including a pair of 21 inches for Michaela. Didn't prize, find out exactly where they were fishing. I'm gonna guess somewhere off of Clinton at the, as the bite has still been really good through that stretch. And then last but certainly not least, TJ Kopecki sent along the following video report for the week for the East Bay. Thanks Toby. Hey guys, hope you're all out there been fishing. Uh, I gotta tell you that in the East Bay and the Mount Hope Bay, the ground fishing has gotten really, really good. Uh, I was able to get out on Saturday and Sunday this weekend on my boat, uh, do some fluke fishing actually. Um, on Saturday, I went out with my daughter and uh, we tried a couple of new spots. I fished off the uh, Brayton Point power plant uh, right in the shipping channel uh, where the boats come in off the dock there. And uh, we actually landed four nice fluke, none of them were keepers, but uh, it was nice to see them way up inside of Mount Hope Bay there. We also landed a, a ton of sea robins uh, on top of that, but uh, all in all, Saturday was a good day. Um, so on Sunday, I went back out and I fished in the middle of Mount Hope Bay, um, right at the mouth of the Sakana River, and uh, I was on buoy too, uh, fishing next to a lot of pots, and um, I, I set up a nice drift. And I actually landed my first keeper fluke of the season from Mount Hope Bay. Um, it was a 20 inch fluke, it was nice. Um, I was able to uh, actually take it home and harvest it and eat it, and it was really, it was delicious. Um, but the biggest thing is, is I wanted to see what these uh, fluke were feeding on in the bay, and um, I pulled out of his stomach uh, two mantis shrimp um, that were kind of reddish, so it's uh, maybe a good sign for me to switch up my technique and. Uh, try some gulp shrimp next week to try and catch them. Um, but uh, out in the bay, uh, scup have been everywhere. Um, another little trick that I learned that um, I use Berkeley gulp to catch my fluke. And when the sea robins or the sea bass bite off the tails, I save them and I use them to catch scup. If you just cut them up in little pieces, they work just as good as a squid strip. Uh, and it can save you a little bit of money here. That's a good little tip. Um, sea bass, tons of sea bass, bigger sea bass. Uh, Sunday, if, if the season was open or down, I probably could have kept my limit on sea bass. Uh, I really caught some nice sea bass. Uh, pink was the hot color for them. Um, I did catch some really big sea robins too. Um, if, if you like to eat those, they're a really good table fare uh, also. But uh, other than that, I'm going to get out there again this week and uh, try some new spots again and see what we can produce. Uh, other than that, tight lines. Keep fishing. All right, cool. Thanks a lot, TJ. Always happy to have your contributions coming through. And of course, if anyone else wants to join in contributing videos, reports, pictures, whatever you got, shoot me an email, tlipinski at thefisherman.com. And hopefully we can add you to next week or the forthcoming reports over the summer. All right, well, there you have it. I'm Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine, wishing you tight lines if you head out onto the water this weekend. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evan Rude Lawrence Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.